linear algebra students. So in this video, what I will do is I will explain why the set of polynomials with usual pointwise addition and usual pointwise multiplication by a constant is a vector space. And for that, I need to uh, remind the 10 axioms that are like very, very summarized here. Uh, color code is intentional. Remember that the red properties are the closure property. They ensure that whenever you perform operations, you still get an element of your set. Uh, the blue ones are the algebraic properties, like uh, in a way that they ensure that um, whatever objects, uh, wh whenever you perform these operations on the objects, uh, they behave pretty much like vectors would behave. And the green properties, well, these two is the exi existence of the zero element, existence of the additive inverse uh, for the addition here. And the one, uh, the number 10 here ensures that one is the identity element for, um, mul for scalar multiplication. Okay, with that in mind, let's proceed with the explanation. Why is the set of polynomials uh, a vector space? So, um, the closure properties. Let's let's have a let's have a look. Okay, so uh, let's let's have one and two. Um, okay, verified. So uh, step number one. Okay, um, so adding two polynomials uh, will be a polynomial. So actually, let's just uh, let's have like uh, p of x that's equal to uh, a0 and all the way up to uh, a n x to the power of n, okay? And then q of x, that will be uh, like, let's say b0 plus all the way up plus b m x to the power of m. Now, nothing guarantees that n is the same as m, okay? So uh, let's just let's just assume that our polynomial like has a degree, right? It, it like this one is of degree n, this one is of degree m. Then in this case, as you can see, so uh, p p of x, uh, p plus q of x, the way it is defined, so p plus q of x is defined to be like p of x plus q of x which is, in other words, like, uh, like you, you add the zero coefficients, okay? And without loss of generality, let's, ju let's just assume uh, that m is bigger than m. So uh, assume uh, m is bigger than n, okay? Uh, so we just assume that one is bigger than the other, in other words, and we assume that it's the Q of X. Okay, so this is just to make the argument like cleaner. So basically what you're doing is you're adding up all the coefficients, right? X to the power of N plus, and then you continue like this until you have just BM X to the power of N. Okay, so... Um, so this is the one for uh, P plus Q of X. And as you can see, it is a polynomial. So like this is an element of uh, V. And the same for just um, like C times U, like C times P of X. Okay. So uh, C times P of X. Uh, the way it is defined again, it is just like C times P of X. So in other words, all the coefficients you multiply by c, so c a zero plus all the way up c a n x to the power of n. Okay, and as you can see, this is also an element, uh, and I say v here, but I I should say uh, like p, right? What I mean by this is that both of these are polynomials, and from there we can see that both one and six are verified. Okay, so one, six are verified. Okay, now as I said, this is an explanation. This is not a proof, okay? Uh, the proof would involve literally proving all of these properties. I can almost say that I proved number one and six. I can almost say that. 
but uh, that's it. You would need like a similar reasoning to prove like every single one of them, which would be long. It's not impossible, like, but it would be long. So, um, again, step number two. Okay, so in the end, what you have to see is that uh, the way we're adding is that we're treating P of X and Q of X as numbers. Okay, so let's, let's just write that. Ultimately, mentally, okay, P of X and Q of X are numbers. Okay, so in other words, uh, numbers, as you know, like, well, R is a vector space, certainly. So it does satisfy all the algebraic properties. Okay, so uh, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. Uh, these, these are all verified. Okay. And um, okay, I'll leave 10 out uh, for now. Okay, uh, we will discuss about the number 10, but for now, let's leave it out. For those of you who don't understand what I mean here, let's have a look at a very simple example. Let's just look at uh, property number two, okay? So example, okay, number two. So the way you would prove it is you would have like P of Q of X, okay? Then you would say this is P of X plus Q of X. And then you would say, okay, since, since these are numbers, Okay, so uh, this is like a real number, and this is also a real number. Then you can permute them. You can say, okay, this is the same thing as Q of X plus P of X. And by the way, of course, this is true for every X, right? This is how pointwise addition and pointwise multiplication is defined. And as you can see, this is by definition what is Q plus P of X, okay? And since X is arbitrary, uh, it works for M, all of them, okay? So this is, for example, how you would prove property number two. But uh, if you understand how to prove property number two, it's going to be the same deal for all of them, right? You're just going to use the fact that these two things in, at the very end are just numbers. Okay, so let's actually check the ones we have, okay? We have one, we have six, okay? I'm going to check it here. And then we have all of the blues. Okay, so these are all checked. Okay, not very clean, but there you go. Let's now go ahead and explain for the green items, which are again the identity element and inverses. So we are now at step number three. So first of all, the zero polynomial. Okay. So, um, I mean, we don't really have a notation for it. I will call it O of X. Okay. Just like uh, to, to be consistent with my putting something cir uh, circular for the zero polynomial. Okay, and this is and this is simply the polynomial that's identically zero. So, uh, like O of x is equal to zero for every x, right? So this is the zero polynomial, and I'm not gonna check that it satisfies four, uh, but it obviously does for the same reason as before. Okay, now the additive inverse. So, um, so we have four in other words. Um, the additive inverse, uh, this is simply the polynomial that you get by flipping all of the signs, right? You, um, you change the sign of all the coefficients. So negative P of X, okay? So actually, let's rewrite what P of X is. So if P of X is equal to a0 plus all the way up plus um, 
plus um, a n x to the power of n. Then negative p of x is literally negative a zero plus all the way up plus negative a n x to the power of n. Okay. So, uh, which means that, um, and we can easily verify that this satisfies number five. Now, finally, for number 10, obviously, um, so uh, one times a polynomial, so one times uh, P of X, which is, I remind you, by definition, one times A zero plus all the way up like 1 times a n x to the power of n, which is obviously equal to p of x, okay? Uh, well, to prove it, it's very simple. You just rewrite a0, a n instead of just 1 times, but that's it. So this verifies 10. And as you can see, we are done. Like, uh, we verified all 10 axiom, which means that um, the set of polynomials of one variable with the usual two operations is a vector space. So my point with this video is to help you to understand how vector spaces work, right? So hopefully that helped. See you in the next video.